Today we're gonna to install a custom EPCO shift knob on my 2013 Boss 302. EPCO shift knobs are available for your classic or late model Mustang. We have three examples here. There are literally thousands and thousands of options between colors, stripes, logos, all kinds of different things. Again, these are custom made most of the time, so figure about four to six weeks for delivery. Now, when you wait that long to get something custom made for your car, you wanna make sure you install it properly. And there is a trick to installing these without damaging them. Today, we're gonna to show you how. Now, we're not gonna show you all the details of how to install a shift knob because let's say it's pretty basic. We know, you know, lefty loosey, righty tighty, we can all figure that out. If you have a Boss 302 though, or GT500 have never had the factory shift knob off, they're installed with Loctite. I mean, they're very, very difficult to get off. I've actually had these things shatter trying to get them off. The best thing to use is a strap wrench, which will allow you to get a grip on it without hurting the surface and usually break it free. Now, in my case, my knob has been off already, so I know it'll just turn off. So we're gonna start by removing the factory knob. Now, depending on what boot setup you have, what design you're going with, depends on what kind of install you're gonna use, whether you use the Loctite, the shift retainer, the lock knob. Either way though, here is where people have a problem with this and I'll show you. We're gonna install this boss knob here. So here's what you don't wanna do. We have a lot of people do is they basically thread it down all the way. and get to about that point there. And obviously it's not straight, no one's gonna want it that way. What happens though is the stud from the shifter goes through the threads, it is now touching the top of the ball here. So if you're about a half turn off like this, if you try to turn this further to get it straight, the top of this is gonna break off. I mean, these are basically cue balls, they're the same construction as a cue ball, and they're strong and they're never gonna break when they're installed, but if you do force it from the inside like that, it will crack this section up here, and I've seen the whole top of these things break off. So you don't wanna, when you reach a point that, that's too far down. You don't want to go that far. So if you're using, for example, if you're gonna go with a lock nut, take this back off again, thread that down. Thread it out, again, pull it down, bottomed out right there. So you wanna go backwards we get it right and thread this up until it reaches the knob. Not quite straight, so we'll loosen it up a little bit. And again, like I said, you can turn it by hand or you can install the strap wrench. Now that's how to install and using the jam nut. If you don't like the jam nut design and you'd rather go with this collar, to do that, you're gonna have to remove the boot and install it that way. We'll show you how to do that. Now to install the collar, you have to remove this original plastic piece. Now to do that, basically you're gonna reach back here and you're gonna pop off your top console plate. Reach down and unplug the harness. remove this from the car. Now, since this is my personal car, I'm actually not looking to do this style with my boss boot, but I'll still show you the process. What you have to do is basically separate the chrome trim, which honestly will come right out. And then this has been a part of my car before, but this will be glued on to here. So all you do is just squeeze the boot and remove the glue. You can see the residue inside there. Now to install this, obviously you can see, it won't fit through without cutting the boot. So what you would do here is literally just trim the front and back 
until that fits around that area there. Then you simply grab a zip tie, put the zip tie in that groove to hold the boot on, and that's how you install this version here. So the process to install your knob and any other Mustang is basically gonna be exactly the same. You have those three different options, just make sure it's installed tight. But the biggest thing is don't over thread it. That's how you're gonna damage the knob. In my case, I stuck with a white knob because I kind of like the vintage look for the Boss 302. I think eventually I might get a custom knob made for it. But either way, the installation is pretty straightforward. Again, just don't over thread it. These Epco knobs will look a great upgrade to your Mustang.